Alright, so I'm going to show you how I added some lights to my K1C, just for better lighting of the time lapses. There's a clean way and a dirty way to do this. Uh, I did both, so I'm going to show you both. But I'm going to start with the dirty way, which is also the quicker and easier way. Assuming you know how to solder and all that. So I'm going to be adding these Cobb LED lights to the lid. And you don't need this hinge kit that I printed for the lid. But it makes it easier to change the filament and whatnot, so, I mean, why not print it? I'll leave links to everything in the description for you. I'm going to pop the lid off and just show real quick that if you do print this hinge kit, I cut pieces of a wire coat hanger to use for the hinge pins instead of using the printed ones, and they work a lot better. So, that's something to consider. Anyway, as I said, I have these Cobb LEDs. I bought these a while back and used them for something on my Solval printer. So I had some leftovers that I just cut to length here to fit inside the lid on this angled part so that they shine down towards the bed when the lid is on. You could also add four strips of LEDs here if you wanted more light. Uh, I didn't have enough, so I'm just going to use what I have. Next, I tinned the ends of these and connected them together with a small piece of wire that I got from an old PC fan, making sure to connect positive to positive and negative to negative. Then I slid some heat shrink tubing over, but I didn't heat anything until I was done with everything because I wanted to make sure that everything works first. I found a USB-C cable and cut the end off. And here, you'll either have a bare, a red, a green, and a white wire, or like this one here, you'll have a black, a red, green, and white. But all I'll need is either the bare and red or the black and red, which are positive 5 volts and ground. I also have these extra male and female JST connectors that I also bought for my Solval. These have three wires, but I'll only need the red and black again, so I trimmed the yellow one away. Then I trimmed one of those down, and I'm going to solder it to the USB cable. Black to black, or bare to black, and red to red, obviously. Then, because I don't want these wires touching, I taped those wires up separately with electrical tape, and then I slid the heat shrink over on top of that. Alright, so here I am testing that everything works before I heat the shrink tubing. And here's everything once I heated all the shrink tubing. Now I'm just prepping the inside of the lid. I just took some alcohol wipes and wiped down the surfaces where I want these LEDs to stick. Next, I made sure that I'm lining them upright. I want the plug to be on the back by the cutout so I can plug the USB cable in there. I just peeled the backing off the strips and stuck them in place. If you take your time, you can get them pretty straight, which I didn't do on the second strip, so it's a little bit crooked, but I can live with it. Right here I'm just making sure that I push them down good enough and they're getting a good stick. At this point, I already ran the USB cable from the front of the printer underneath it and up the back to the lid. So I'm just going to be putting the lid on and plugging in the JST connector here. The plug is only there so that I don't have to remove the whole USB cable if I ever need to take the lid off. But you could just run a USB cable straight to the lights if you don't mind pulling all the cable out of the way every time you need to take the lid off. So I probably could have done that and been fine. Anyway, I just needed an excuse to use up some of these JST connectors. Okay, and as you can see, I'm just plugging the USB into the front of the printer and let's see how much of a difference the extra lighting makes.
It adds quite a bit of extra light, more than that stock light for sure, but I'll show you some time lapses at the end of this video for comparison. Here's another way you can do it, which I had already done months ago. I had this video all recorded and just never posted anything because the one light really didn't make that much of a difference. Taking the right wall off is optional here, but it makes running the cable a lot easier. However, you do have to take the bottom off for this. And you want to look for this hole right here next to the belt pulleys where all the wires under here pretty much are running up and into the printer. That goes up to this channel right here and this piece just pops right off and then you can pop it right back on when you're done. Next, I just fed the USB cable up through there and pulled it out. Then I just soldered everything right here. After that, I just popped the channel cover back on and now I'll show you how I routed the cable underneath. It ain't pretty, but no one's looking down here anyway. I just don't want it to go in these gears. But from there, it's gonna come down here, around the power supply, and then on the bottom of this, you'll see a, uh, right here where the screw is, there's a hole in this plate, which we'll see in a second. It's like it was made for it. Plenty of room to plug it in. So I'm going to screw all this back together, and then we'll see what it looks like. Now like I said, I added this light strip months ago, so this one currently is not connected to those lights that I added to the lid, but you could easily daisy chain them and run another set of wires up to the lid, or even add another JST connection between them, that's completely up to you. That way you can unplug it here to fully remove the lid. This way looks a lot cleaner in my opinion as far as the wiring goes, but if the dirty way of running the USB cable under and up the back works for you, and you don't care, it's really simple. No one will ever see mine but me anyway, <clears throat> and uh, I guess all of you now. <laughs> Alright, so here is a comparison of the results, and uh, I'll leave you with that.